SpaceX finally launched rocket in July. SpaceX Starship Super Heavy rocket is ready for what could be its final launch pad test before a likely orbital test flight in July. SpaceX is set to make history with its next generation spacecraft. The launch has been affected several times due to delays thus preventing the Super Heavy from taking its first orbital flight. However, this is all going to change thanks to hard work by the SpaceX team. Sit back and watch as we have all the details for you regarding SpaceX's first Super Heavy launch. SpaceX has worked incredibly hard to build a reusable rocket. Musk's plan for Super Heavy is for it to be reusable completely so that it can be reused several times. These are all in Musk's plan to take people to Mars and he knows if the Super Heavy fails, his plan are going to be dead even before we set foot on the Red Planet. Reusing the Starship will massively reduce the operating costs because sending a rocket to space costs millions. Musk is looking at launch costs of $2 million which will commoditize space travel and allow humans to travel to Mars in droves. However, it's not that easy to build a rocket that is powerful enough to take humans and cargo on such a long voyage to the Red Planet. SpaceX chose a two-stage design that involves a booster, the Super Heavy, and the upper stage known as Starship. The two will separate once the spacecraft leaves Earth's atmosphere and is no longer governed by the gravitational pull of the Earth. The upper stage or Starship will continue on its way to Mars, while the Super Heavy rocket will return to Earth and prepare for the next launch which could be in under an hour. The booster will land on its retractable legs or use another of Musk's crazy idea. Be caught in midair with a pair of arms attached to the launch tower. It would be incredibly heavy and it seems a bit crazy by Elon Musk. This Super Heavy is a massive structure and it's in the name. The rocket stands at 70 meters at 9 meters wide. This is a step down from the initial 12 meters that Musk envisions at the onset of the development. The rocket has witnessed mutilate upgrades and has improved the total trust the booster can produce. Months back, it was thought that the B-4 booster prototype combined with the S-20 ship would be used for the first orbital flight. However, it's now confirmed to the B-7. This booster prototype has not had the smoothest development journey. The team had to rush the booster away from the orbital launch site for repairs after it suffered damage during the first round of testing. The booster is equipped with a 33-engine puck. It is also the first finished Starship prototype capable of working with the new Raptor V2 engine. SpaceX also installed on the Booster 7 for the first time secondary header tanks which store landing propellants to prepare for the impact of the changes. The Super Heavy SpaceX had to specifically modify the structural test DTSND by outfitting it with 13 hydraulic rams to simulate the full thrust of the booster. However, even with the damage, it appears SpaceX was at least able to simulate the thrust of the new Raptor engines and even achieve some major mechanical stress tests. However, a later image showed the damage within the booster which led the team to abandon the initial test. From the photo, it seems the booster witnessed an operational failure rather than a design failure. And deterred, SpaceX took the damaged B-7 back to the high base for repair and was soon back on the test stand. Then it quickly conducted some tests to confirm the prototype was back in action. The next was a cryogenic proof test which involved filling the tanks completely with about 3,000 tons of liquid nitrogen and oxygen. It seems that the team had been simultaneously encasing Booster 7's Raptors and engine sections in shrouds that would protect them during static fire testing. These shrouds will also protect the Raptor engines during launch, re-entry and landing if B-7 makes it that far. However, Musk later confirmed that the team was installing the new rocket engines on the Super Heavy. He also mentioned that SpaceX had already produced all the engines it needed for the first orbital test. That would mean not less than 40 engines in total. The booster requires 33 engines while the ship needs 7 after the upgrade of the rocket system. The company had already been spotted moving multiple Raptor engines to the high bay on Starbase, corroborating Musk's report. Interestingly, the Booster 4 only requires a few days to install all the Raptor engines. They were however spared a static test. The installations of the heat shield, however, took several weeks. SpaceX has also added grid fins to the B-7 Super Heavy, proving the company really plans to go far with this prototype. In a parallel effort, SpaceX has been re refilling the Starbase Orbital Launch Site Huge Tank Farm in preparations for a full wet dress rehearsal. The tank farm can store subcooled and distribute thousands of liters of liquid oxygens 
liquid methane, liquid nitrogen, and more. As for the much-anticipated static fire test, Musk reveals that SpaceX is taking a cautionary approach by taking testing of the engines one at a time. The Super Heavy is finally back on the launch mount, and altogether B7 spent six weeks in its previous stint in the high bay. This time, the booster might not leave again until the first orbital launch has been concluded. We are excited about the launch and are keeping our fingers crossed eagerly waiting for a launch date. That's all for this video. Hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching.